My next two guests study the nano world and their discoveries have made them giants in their field. Harold Rose and Andre Kravonik are recipients of the 2020 Kavli Prize in nanoscience. Harold, let me begin with you. The electron microscope, it's been around for decades, but my understanding is that there was a flaw. And, and can you tell us what that flaw was and, and what you did to fix it? Uh, electron lenses you have in electron microscope, they are compared to light optic lenses, they are very poor. And in order uh, to make them better, you need glasses. And uh, so uh, I designed glasses and bought uh, these poor lenses. However, the entire system was not stable enough. You wiggle around and uh, don't see a sharp image. I see. So in essence, you sort of put the, the arms on the glasses. If we were to wear glasses that didn't have arms that hooked onto our ears, the lenses would move. And you found a version of that idea to apply to the electron microscope. Yeah. So Andre, can you give us a sense of where the state of resolution was before you work and where you took it by virtue of your discoveries? It's often said that the electron microscopy are the, is the eyes of science. And that's very true. It's a scientific method for letting us see what's happening at the fundamental level of matter at the level of the atoms. And before we could not see the atoms very clearly, after we could. And so can you give us a, a feel, Harold, for the kinds of scales that we're talking about? How small can you see, so to speak, with the corrected electron microscope? You know, think of a golf ball. You know what a golf ball is? It's, it's about the diameter of an inch. And now think uh, of the Earth. Now the ratio of the golf ball to the Earth is the same as the ratio of the atom to the golf ball. So Andre, can you give us a sense when we, when we talk about looking at an atom with these devices that, that you and Harold have pushed to the next level, how close do we actually come to seeing an atom? Well, you see atoms. You can put an electron beam on pretty much a single atom and you can ask it, what kind of an atom are you? Uh, and it will respond. It will give you an energy loss spectrum in which it identifies itself. And not only that, it also tells you how it's bonded to its neighbors. So if it's, you have, say, a silicon atom which is bonded to three neighbors and a silicon atom which is bonded to four neighbors, it gives you a different signature. So it's hugely revealing. So with that kind of resolution, which is so incredibly impressive, what do you imagine might be the applications, perhaps even the practical applications of this capacity to observe the micro world with such fidelity? There are many situations where a single atom will make a difference. Uh, in all the wonderful modern electronics, uh, it's based on uh, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, MOSFETs for short. And if you get one atom in the wrong place at that interface between the metal and the oxide, uh, it will destroy the properties of the transistor and your iPhone will, will not work so well. So uh, a question to, to both of you. En route to great discoveries, there are many examples in the history of science where there's resistance from the mainstream community. The example that comes to mind for me, when Einstein was going to try to figure out the force of gravity, Max Planck said to him, you shouldn't do it. You're not going to succeed. No one's going to believe you. But Einstein persevered. In, in each of your cases, did you feel that there were moments where the establishment was not behind you, not encouraging you, trying to steer you into a different direction? My wife tells me that I'm rather stubborn. And my stubbornness <laughs> uh, was one reason, because you see, if uh, everybody said you will fail. Yeah, but there was no uh, physical reason for it because it was just a, a matter of a lack of necessary technology. And so I, uh, my feeling was, 
uh, I have to wait. And uh, until uh, technology will be available, and then it will work. Real advancement in science needs uh, good ideas, endurance, devotion, and nowadays perhaps teamwork. Andre, any any words for young scientists or, or funding agencies that you want to leave us with? When I decided to go into aberration correction, uh, four professors would tell me, you bearing your career, uh, this, this is never going to work. And one had to have a healthy dose of self-confidence to disregard it. And also, I was at the stage in my career where I thought, well, if it doesn't work, uh, I will have given up two years of my life. But I've done lots of other worthwhile things before. People will not hold it against me. So this was a project where I went into it thinking, uh, most people expect me to fail. I can only exceed expectations. So uh, my advice would be uh, try to find a really interesting project like that uh, at the right stage in your career. Don't do it uh, right in the beginning. Uh, if uh, I did that for my PhD and the project failed, that would have been no PhD. That would have been no success uh, career to follow. Uh, but there is a stage where you can afford to do things like that. So don't be afraid. Uh, go after it if it looks exceptionally promising, even though the outcome is not very certain. Well, great advice. And of course, we are thrilled that both you and Harold did succeed. So congratulations on your achievements. Congratulations on this wonderful award from the Kavli Prize 2020 Nanoscience. And thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you very much.